Good morning, my name is Rachel and that is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear and I am here today to do the mid-year freak out chat. So jumping right in with the questions. Question number one, best book you've read so far in 2021? That's a pretty hard thing to come up with after six months of reading. I had some issues. I had to go back to my spreadsheet and just look and see everything and it came back that my favorite book so far this year has been the first one I finished, and that was Ancillary Mercy by Anne Leckie, which was finishing also her Radix series. If you're not familiar with the Radix series, it follows Breck, who is an ancillary for a bigger ship, which has been blown up, and Breck has survived, and now Breck wants revenge. Question number two. Best sequel you read so far in 2021? And I have... Honor's Knife by Rachel Bach. This is the Paradox Trilogy. I think it did a great job picking up where the first book left off, and it kept me engrossed and engaged the entire time. And it was just really fun to keep following Debbie and to see her and to see her evolution of the choices she's making based off of what's happening to her and the information that she's getting. It was it was really great to see that evolution. Alright, so number three, a new release you haven't read yet but want to. And I have Casting Conflict by Michelle Seguera. This is her newest in her Chronicles of Elantra series, and I'm really, really excited to find out what's going to happen here. If you have not read this series, you sh totally should. The first one is Cast in Silence, and it follows Kaylin, who has remade herself from her past, and she's now a junior officer in the branch of the government that investigates crimes. And this is like, well, I say branch of the government because this is just like a city government. So it, the saying the branch of the government makes it sound bigger than it is. I mean, she's, she's investigating things in the city and she's the chosen one, but doesn't understand what that means. And those who do are surprised that a mortal has been chosen. Yes, it has the chosen one trope, but that doesn't um, it doesn't take away her agency. And in fact, she does things a lot of the time where people are like, "What are you doing? You could die. You're immortal." So it's really fun, and I really enjoy this series. And I just got this from the library, so I'm very excited. Question number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I don't really have anything that is coming out that I'm super excited about. I'm interested in reading Shards of Earth by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I know a lot of people have talked about his Children of Time series. I haven't gotten into that. I'm interested in starting something with him, and since this is his newest thing, I like starting with the most recent work of an author just allows me to get to know them better. And I believe that it is, I think actually originally it was slated to come out in May and then it got pushed back to August because that's the date that's showing up on my Goodreads now. So question number five, biggest disappointment. And that goes to Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Bodard. While the writing and the characters were interesting, compelling, I was, I was disappointed with the story because it reads more as the ending chapters of a book of a, or of a longer story. And we didn't get the rest of the story, and so I am thus disappointed. Number six, my biggest surprise. And that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I am not a horror person, and so I read this because it had been nominated for the Nebula, and I didn't expect to love it like I do. It really ended up working for me and yeah. So that was my biggest surprise because I was like, oh no, horror, I'll probably do enough of this, but at least I'm giving it a shot. And then, oh my gosh, I really like how the pacing and the characters, yeah, it, it just really, really worked for me. Question number seven, favorite new author or, and this can be a debut or new to me. And so I chose a new to me. And that author is Elizabeth Moon. I read the first book in this series earlier this year working or because it was on my list for top 10 space opera written by women. And I really enjoyed it. In fact, this Victory Conditions is the fifth book. And so 
I think it that finishes the Vata War series, and now there's the Vata Peace series. But I just really, really enjoy Elizabeth Moon's writing, and especially because she not only gives you the perspective of the person you're in, and each of her characters are unique, but she follows through. So if you're looking for someone who talks about the consequences of war and conflict and shows you the trauma that is happening from that, she is someone that you want to pick up. And I'm really enjoying her, and I know once I finish all of her Vada books, I will look into the rest of her works. Number seven, newest fictional crush. And I'm old. I'm... I know when I was younger, I always was attracted to the bad boy, but now I'm attracted to the person who has a good heart. And so while it's not like a crush that one typically has, if I was going to fall for any of the characters I have read this year, that would actually be Farrick. And I met him in All the Stars and Teeth, which is the first book. This is the second book. I don't own the first book, but I own the second book, so I thought I'd hold this up. And... I just really like him because he's true to what he believes. So while he loves Amora, he also recognizes that she's a person and she gets to decide what she wants to do. And he's competent. He's not trying to hold her back. He's trying to work with her. And I just really liked his personality. If I was going to fall in love with one of the characters I met, it would be him. Question number nine. Favorite newest character? And for this one, I could not narrow it down. So, I'm going to give you a couple. I loved Debbie Morris from the Paradox series. I love Torin Kerr from The Better Part of Valor. I love Kyla Arvada from the Vada series. I like Shiala from Black Sun. Sidra from The Closed in Common Orbit. And so far, I'm really enjoying Jess from Blackwater Sister. Now, I know... As I put this together, I noticed I do kind of have a theme. I like women who take charge when they need to. They have their network. I mean, especially like Torin and Kai, Sidra and Jess, they all have a network of friends or family or both that they work with. Very much a heroine's journey story that we're following. But I like Devi as well because she's learning how to do that. And I just like the cockiness of her and how she's not, okay, not even cockiness. I love the confidence of her because she knows what she can do and what she can do well, and she will do that. And I like Sidra from The Closed and Common Orbit because it's self-discovery and she's true to who she is. So there's themes and commonalities between these favorite characters that I've noticed, and I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay that I have a favorite character type. Question number 10, a book that made you cry. And my first answer to this was, my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry by Frederick Bachman. Bachman books always make me cry. I did, however, also tear up at Victory Conditions, which surprised me, but it is the last in the series. And so, yeah, no one's safe. Number 11, book that made you happy. And I chose Fugitive Telemetry because... I love Murderbot, and how can you not? And this is just a good, warm story of Murderbot doing what Murderbot does best. Question number 12, most beautiful book you have bought this year, or received? And I chose the or received. And then I got The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. This was an art copy. Um, I got it through a Goodreads giveaway, but I really like this cover. And now I know that among Becky Ch Chambers fans, there's a, the discussion of whether or not you like the American covers. I do. I like them. I think they fit the intent of the story, the relaxed, the, the lightheartedness. And so I really think that they work. I also think the UK covers are gorgeous, but I do like the American covers. So I do think that this is a very pretty cover. And it fits with the... Uh, the other ones, it's always nice when they don't change the visual layout in the middle of, this, of a series. And 13, what books do you still need to read this year? And I'm going with Finish because these are all books that I've started and 
yeah, my currently reading on Goodreads is at 167. So when things get put onto that list, when I have to return them to the library because I can't finish them. So I'd like to work on getting those actually back and read. Just some books that I need to finish. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. The Ruin of Kings by Jin Lyons. Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. Pandora Star by Peter Hamilton. And question number 14. Favorite book community members. And I am actually going to link several different people down below in the description. And I am going to link booktubers and author tubers since I watch a healthy amount of both. So please go check these people out. I'll have the list divided so that if you only like author tube content, you can do that. Or if you only like book tube content, or if you like both. If you have not heard of any of the people mentioned, which you probably will have heard of some of these people. If you, but if you haven't heard of any of them, go check them out. They're all amazing. Thank you, and have a great day.